I don't know how the actual citizens of these blue cities aren't rioting at this point. The city paying illegal migrants, which I didn't even know this. They're getting more than $9,000 a month in free shit. And I guess this has been going on since October of last year. I'm Stephanie Keith. And I am Tara Manjekovic. And we are Unapologetically Outspoken. Hey everybody, happy Friday. We have made it to the end of the week. And once again this week, Republicans in Congress have proven their inability to get their shit together as a united front as they failed to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas on Tuesday. The final vote was 214 to 216, with four Republicans siding with the Democrats. And at one point, the vote was tied 215 to 215 until Rep. Blake Moore from Utah switched his vote in the last round. And then right after that abysmal failure, the House also fell short of the votes they needed to approve a standalone bill to aid Israel. And apparently there is this plan to bring the Mayorkas impeachment back to the table when Majority Leader Steve Scalise comes back to Congress after getting cancer treatment. But really, as usual, this just shows how divided the Republican Party is and how there are clearly rhinos in Congress who are actually Democrats who don't care about our failing national security, which Mayorkas is absolutely fucking complicit in. So even though this impeachment probably never would have made it through the Senate anyway, it's just more evidence of the inefficient clown show that is our Congress. Well, yeah. And Tara, I don't understand why this isn't a bipartisan agreement here. I mean, this guy has clearly failed. We said, what, it's like 78% of Americans that believe our our borders wide open. So, like, why is it just up to the Republicans, too? Like, the Democrats should be, you know, voicing their opinion based on what their people are saying. And 78% of the population can agree that Mayorkas has failed. So it's just like, it's stuff like this that makes me want to throw my hands in the air and give up because nothing ever gets done. It's like... I say it all the time. Congress is nothing but a theater with puppets to entertain and distract us while the real people in power are making all the actual decisions that matter. And I'm sure that those few Republicans that voted uh, against impeachment are getting a kickback of some kind, either that or a threat. I mean, either one is possible. Um, But it just goes to show like we have this uniparty and I have to keep reminding myself to stop talking about it like it's Republicans versus Democrats, because in reality, the big picture is that it's Americans versus the all powerful global elitists. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Except you have the Biden admin constantly blaming everything on the Republicans. So all that does is further clarify that Republican-Democrat divide. Well, and And all the Republicans and Democrats are playing their role in the theater performance, that it's us against them. And it's just like to further keep us divided. And I'm just so sick and tired of it, if you can't tell. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're not the only one. I'm right there with you. And like this whole thing with the, you know, bipartisan Senate border security bill, of course, it was dead on arrival. Like it didn't even make it to the House. And we talked about this last week, but details were released earlier this week confirming what we had discussed last week about the parameters of that proposed bill. And it would have cost taxpayers one hundred and eighteen billion dollars. Fourteen billion of that was supposed to go to Israel which apparently is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And then there was going to be another $60 billion to Ukraine to continue losing the war. And only $20 billion of that was going to go to securing our border. So I agree with Senator Eric Schmidt from Missouri. He basically described it as, quote, a bill that, again, fast tracks more illegal immigration, doesn't do anything on a border wall, doesn't do anything to fix the parole po- process. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, again, I don't know why I act like I'm surprised or why I'm still surprised. I guess I'm just super naive. I think we've already established that. But when I looked at like the bill didn't pass because of 49 voting yes to 50 no's. And again, I'm like, why isn't everyone on the same page here? This bill was shit. (laughs) 
Yeah, but that surprised me, though, because that was in the Senate. I figured it would pass the Senate and fail in the House, but it didn't even pass the Senate. Right, exactly. And so what's really interesting or actually super shady is that you have Mitch McConnell, who I cannot stand, who was a total supporter of the bill, right? Because he's part of like the freaking Uniparty. Um, So he ended up voting no. He was supporting it and he voted no. Well, so did Chuck Schumer. And I was like, what? Like Chuck Schumer, it, like Mr., you know, like leader of the of the left. So I'm like, what is going on here? But I guess what happened is since Chuck Schumer voted no, apparently this will give them the opportunity to raise the issue again at a later date. So I don't know what they have up their sleeve, but my guess is that they either knew that they didn't have enough support, so they're waiting to gain more support, or they didn't want it to pass so that they can continue trying to blame Republicans for the border because they love to switch that around. And and that way they could say, oh, it's the Republicans fault during this election year that the border is chaos. So like that's my I'm, I'm guessing it's one of those things. But either way, again, both Schumer and McConnell are part of the elite uniparty military industrial complex. So I don't trust them whatsoever. And I'm sure that this isn't the end of this border bill. And since I'm sure we're probably going to see and hear more of it, I want to play a clip from uh, Senator Ted Cruz from Texas. So this was prior to the bill, you know, going through the Senate, but he was explaining just how dangerous the bill is and why it's a good thing that Republicans vote against it. So I want to play this clip for you real quick. Policy, this bill is terrible. It is an absolute, it, it, it is a bill that Chuck Schumer wanted that is designed not to secure the border, not just not to secure the border. It's designed to make it worse. So this bill, as you noted, it codifies Joe Biden's open borders. Catch and release, the cause of this crisis, it codifies catch and release. It puts it into the law. Not only that, it normalizes 5,000 illegal immigrants a day. That works out to 1.8 million a year. That works out to about 6 million illegal immigrants over the three years of Biden. We have, in fact, seen 9.6 million illegal immigrants. So so the idiotic Republican proposal was, let's be for two-thirds of the border invasion that Biden has allowed. That made no sense. Not only did it put it into law, 1.8 1.8 million every year in perpetuity, but it also put into law giving those illegal immigrants work permits, giving them lawyers paid for by the taxpayers. It gave billions of dollars to sanctuary cities to keep their policies going, and it gave billions of dollars to left-wing nonprofit organizations that are bringing the illegal uh, immigrants in. So it funds the process. And I'll tell you the provision that just as a Texan that pissed me off the most. It it went directly after the state of Texas, and it said any litigation filed challenging this law has to be filed in Washington, D.C., in federal district court. So Texas can't sue in the federal courts in Texas, where Texas has been winning. Instead, they got to go to Washington with the very liberal judges. This was a disaster on policy grounds because it did not solve the problem. Okay, so... I wanted to play that because it's absolutely astonishing how many smart, educated people I saw like that were for this bill and thinking that it's actually going to solve the border crisis. When in reality, all it was doing was putting it into law to allow illegal immigration, to allow catch and release. And I mean, think about it. We have laws in place already against illegal entry into our country. Like, go look at Title VIII. Those laws can be enforced. But once again, they're just playing these bullshit games to try to make it seem like they have this solution when really they're just continuing to create the problem. Like he said, funding all these organizations to help more people come into the country. So this bill would have legally allowed over one million illegal migrants into our country every year. And that is on top of the legal immigration policy we already have on the books. So it's like this this whole thing, none of it made sense. And I guess I was just surprised that anyone would actually think it was going to solve anything. Yeah, because clearly it's not going to. And I'm I'm really glad that it didn't pass. But the problem is what's going to happen now, right? And I mentioned earlier, like the standalone um, 
bill for Israel that was rejected. It was like 17.6 billion. And that didn't even make it to a vote. Like Biden promised to veto it before it even went to a vote. And why? Because he wants the fucking money for Ukraine. Yeah, because he's compromised. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but like, why are we giving money to Israel? Like you said, it's one of the richest countries and they have a very well-equipped military and they even have free health care and schooling for their citizens, unlike the U.S. So why are we giving our taxpayer dollars to a country like that? Like they have it handled. And I'm sorry, but fuck Ukraine. Like this is complete insanity at this point that we are even you know, considering the idea of sending one more penny there. And I have to think that the money ends up in the bank accounts of the Congress members, because why else would they go along with it and want this? You know, they've got to be compromised as well. Well, since you bring that up, I have the perfect clip to explain why. It's straight up money laundering of our taxpayer dollars. And it's for a war where we literally don't even know what's happening in this war anymore, right? right? Do we see footage of Ukraine? No. All we see is Zelensky consistently asking for more and more money. So I want to play this clip from, of course, Real AF. Um, this was from a couple days ago. And listen to what Andy had to say. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, dude, I'm tired of these old, miserable bags of shit telling us that we're on the wrong side of history when clearly all they're doing, if you have any common sense at all, is they're creating money money laundering operation after money laundering operation after money laundering operation. They're inflating the currency, making shit hard on the American people, making it so they can't pay their bills, they can't survive, and these people are flying off in their private jets, bro, not giving a single fuck about you or me. I'm sick of this, dude. Yeah, yeah you know my 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 question. And this is how you know it's proof that this is nothing more but 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 laundering fucking taxpayer dollars. How much money have we given Ukraine already? Over a hundred billion dollars, almost two hundred billion dollars. How yeah. how how good of a wall could that have built? Well, not only that, Andy. Why haven't they won yet? Because it's over. <laughs> like- <laughs> Not reporting it. We gave them a hundred. Do you notice how much they don't report on the actual status of the war? Do you notice how the people who report the truth about the war somehow end up missing or dead? Mm-hmm. Like that American reporter that was just quote unquote passed away in a Ukrainian prison, and he's out here saying, "Dude, the war is over." Mm-hmm. All the Ukrainians men are done. Yeah. Rush. Yep. Yeah. Right. I know it's so crazy and it's true. And yeah, like, I'm sorry, but why are American reporters in prison in Ukraine when we're giving them 130 some odd billion dollars? I mean, come on, people wake up. (laughs) Exactly. Outstanding question. So like you said, fuck the money to Ukraine. But like getting back to this border bill, I was honestly surprised to see that the Border Patrol was supporting it. Because the acting chief of the Border Patrol and the Border Patrol Union were both endorsing that Senate bill on Monday. And I can only assume it's because the bill included funding for hiring 1,500 new immigration officers. Um, The CBP acting commissioner, Troy Miller, I guess he sent an internal memo to all the employees saying that it was going to provide the strongest set of tools that Border Patrol has had in decades to help them effectively manage migration and enhance border security. And like literally just like the words coming out of Biden's mouth, he called it tough and fair. And then the National Border Council, uh, Border Patrol Council, they said it's not perfect but it was like better than the status quo, even though union president Brandon Judd said just last week in a house subcommittee that Biden has destabilized our borders. So it's like, why are they, why were they supporting the bill in the first place? Yeah. They're probably getting some kind of kickback. And we know like most of that money was going to go towards processing more illegals. So like more agents, all that kind of stuff, but it did nothing to stop the flow. It just makes the flow more efficient, you know? And So this is why, like, I kind of question Abbott, though, and like, why, again, like, why did he decide to take such drastic measures now in an election year? Because I feel like what it's done is it's given Biden and the Democrats an opportunity to, like, flip the script. So now, just like they're doing, saying, 
oh, Republicans are the problems. They're the ones blocking the solution. And it's like before that, everyone, both Republican and Democrat, you've got the majority of the population in agreement that the Biden administration has failed miserably on the border. But now you have people saying like, oh, nope, it's the Republicans fault uh, because Biden's trying to secure the border, but Republicans won't let him. So I feel like like I just just don't understand why they gave them that opportunity, you know? Well, and and like you said, like every time Biden brings up the border, he 100 percent blames it on Republicans. And the Biden admin made some kind of statement yesterday that he's considering taking executive action since the border bill wasn't passed. But we don't know what that action is going to be yet. So I don't know. The whole thing is just fucking shady to me. And I didn't really think about the timing of what you just said until you said it. And so now you have my wheels turning on that. But speaking of like, where's the money going, right? Have you heard what's been happening in fucking like New York and Chicago? Yeah. Like, I don't know how the actual citizens of these blue cities aren't rioting at this point. But I do want to give props to Chicago's ninth ward alderman. He's a city councilman who he's been speaking out because he's fed up with the city paying illegal migrants, which I didn't even know this. They're getting more than $9,000 a month in free shit. And I guess this has been going on since October of last year. And he spoke out in a city council meeting earlier this week about how this is obviously taking away resources from Chicago residents and especially black communities. And he told the council, quote, if you give me three meals, housing, childcare, education, a voucher for $9,000, you know what? I'd come to Chicago too. And that's what they're doing. They're telling people and they're sending money back to Venezuela to come to Chicago because, hey, good times are rolling there. They're taking care of everybody. We have Venezuelans driving cars. Where'd they get a driver's license? Where'd they get insurance from? You have Venezuelans being caught with drugs and guns. Where are they getting them from? End quote. So I guess back in September of last year, he wanted the issue of Chicago being a sanctuary city to go to vote, but they agreed to like put it on the ballot. But instead of making it a straight yes or no question, like should the city of Chicago remain a sanctuary city? The left wing mayor, Brandon Johnson, he rephrased the question and he rephrased it to say, quote, should the city of Chicago impose reasonable limits on the city's providing resources for migrant sheltering, such as funding caps and shelter occupancy time limits, if necessary, to prevent a substantial impact on Chicago's current residents? End quote. Like, totally different question, right? right. Yeah. So yeah. it's a totally clear the mayor of Chicago does not give a fuck about the actual residents of Chicago. And then in New York, not only has Mayor Adams like kicked New Yorkers out of schools and hotels and parks and shelters to house migrants, there have been reports of massive illegal migrant crime sprees throughout the city, including assaulting police officers. And now what is he doing? He's giving illegal migrants prepaid credit cards. So this is the city that complains that it's overrun with migrants. They've declared multiple states of emergency due to the migrant crisis every time he gets on camera all mayor adams does is cry and whine about the migrant problem right and i'm sorry but like they're just digging their own grave and encouraging more illegal Im immigration with this shit they're spending 53 million dollars on a program to give migrant families that are being housed at the roosevelt hotel they're giving them like cash to spend on food and reportedly these migrants have to sign an affidavit like swearing that they're only going to spend the money on food and baby supplies like that's going to happen so for example like a family of four can get approximately a thousand dollars a month and then these cards are refilled every 28 days and then on top of that the city has spent another 137 million dollars in contracts with other city hotels to provide 750 rooms for more illegal migrants and yet they complain about the migrants continuing to arrive and they complain about the escalation in crime. So like, why am I bringing up these two stories? Because it's all related to the Biden admin and the left not wanting to close the border. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I saw that same clip with that man speaking out, you know, to the city council. And I've seen a lot of clips of people in the black community that are saying, 
you know, the black vote isn't going to even count anymore because there's so many migrants. It's going to completely wash out, you know, um, what the black community needs. And so, like you said, the thousand dollars per month, this apparently all came about because they were giving the illegal uh, migrants food. I guess they were giving them sandwiches and the illegal migrants were throwing them in the garbage and going and buying their own food. Like, can you believe that? So they determined, oh, well, it'll just be better to give them the money on like a credit card and let them buy what they want. But to your point, no one's monitoring how they spend this. And to put it into perspective, a family of four is getting $1,000 if they're an illegal migrant, but a family of four that are American citizens only get $200 in food SNAP benefits. And that's only if they meet like all of these other stipulations first. Like what the hell? Like what is wrong with this picture? And let's not forget, like you said, these migrants are staying in a nice hotel with a cleaning service and all the bells and whistles. They get free airfare and bus tickets anywhere they want to go. And in fact, two of the illegals that assaulted the New York City police officers are now in California. Why? Because they hopped on a bus with their free ticket and fled to another sanctuary city. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I also read a New York Post story yesterday about all these like cell phone snatchings in New York City that are happening to women. And one of the robbers is an illegal migrant from Venezuela. She has been arrested at least eight times in the six months that she's been in the United States illegally. But instead of getting sent to jail or deported, she just gets supervised release and continues to live rent free in one of these illegal migrant sanctuary hotels. And she continues to receive the benefits and the free meals that, as you pointed out, many actual Americans don't get or even qualify for. Like, it's unfucking believable. And I also want to point out that, like, the backlog of immigration cases for illegals in the United States is unprecedented, just like the numbers of illegals crossing the border. But there are millions of illegal migrants who are being allowed to, quote, temporarily live in the United States while they await for these formal deportation proceedings. And I was reading an article in The Guardian that as of December of last year, there are 3.3 million cases pending. So we have 682 immigration judges, and that means one judge has an average caseload of 4,500 migrants. Like, do you think any of these people are ever going to court? No. Like, it's such a farce. We tempor temporarily, in air quotes, let these people into the country. We pay for them to live here. We allow them to commit crimes with no repercussions. But don't worry about it because eventually they're going to face a possible deportation trial. Like, really? Like, it seriously blows my mind. <laughs> By then, they'll have a new Social Security card and identity Another that name. they'll yeah. pay, they'll use that money to pay for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I want to play another clip from Real AF because in this one, Andy Frisella start, goes into like the underlying issues with the existent migrant crisis, and he was relating it to the proposed Senate bill. And this clip was from Monday, and I know the Senate bill didn't pass, but I still want to play it because what he said is very relevant. The bill would mandate that the border be shut if there are 5,000 encounters over the course of a week or 8,500 migrants encountered in a single day. How about zero? How about zero motherfuckers allowed over here that aren't supposed to be here? How about that? How about we allow zero migrants through the border of the United States of America for any reason, shape, form, for anything? That's, How about that? That's the law. How about we take $118 billion and put it all on the border and fix this problem so that we have zero. And the reason that they're wanting to allow 5,000 or 8,500 a day is because they're trying to naturalize those people into American citizenship. And they understand that common sense Americans, pure nationalist Americans, nationalist is not a bad word, by the way, people who believe in America and are patriots of America, want America to belong to Americans. There's nothing wrong with that. OK, these people want to change that and they want to change the, the actual cultural identity of this country to their liking so that these people will vote for them. And because we don't want those people here, those migrants want to be here. So which way are they going to vote? So they bring them in. They, they, they give them amnesty. They allow them to vote. 
and it changes the entire demographic. That's clearly what they're doing. Elon had a tweet about this over the weekend. We've been talking about this, the replacement theory, for years, and we got called racist and bigots and liars and misinformation, and the truth is that's exactly what's going on. And the people calling us those names, they want the Democrats to have permanent power too, which is why they try to call you those names when you point this out. So it's clearly what's happening. So there's a number of problems here. None of that money should go to Israel, not a single dollar. None of it should go to Ukraine, not a single dollar. All of it should be put on the border and not a single motherfucker should be allowed across that border ever again. And on top of that, we should figure out how to get rid of all the people. How are we going to get rid of 10 to 20 million people? Because it depends on who you ask, bro. If you ask Tucker Carlson, they say 22 million people are here. Mm -hmm. Other people, the, the actual media number is 10. Now, has the media given us any accurate numbers over the last number of years? No. Okay, so let's say there's 22 yeah. million people that are here that have come here in the last three or four years that are not supposed to be here. How would we even logistically deport them? How would you do it? Yeah. How would you do it? The police can't do it. There's not enough of them. No, military can't do it. No, the citizens would have to get involved in doing it, bro. For real. And that's where we get into the conversation of an actual conflict on our, on our soil. Yeah. That's crazy. 22 million. That's a good point. I don't believe what the media yeah. is reporting. I don't either. Jeez, that's crazy. I know. It is. And then like later in this conversation, Andy and DJ are talking about how this plan and this like massive influx of illegal migrants all ties into the 2020 defund the police movement and all the George Soros prosecutors releasing criminals and like not prosecuting any crimes and that the whole reason for that is a way to prepare Americans for exactly what's happening now with illegal immigration, the insane crime rates that we're seeing in these large cities that's only going to escalate and carry over into smaller cities and towns. And like the whole purpose of this massive illegal immigration and zero enforcement of crime is to desensitize us to believe that like high rates of crime and illegal immigration are just part of the day-to-day -day norm. And then yeah. how easy is it to just like take over control because at that point we're used to it and who's resisting? Yeah, at that point it's just mass chaos anyways. We'd be like yeah. grateful for the military to come in and take control or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's like, you know, all of these people that are going into all these blue sanctuary cities, if there's that many people, I mean, that's enough to increase the the um, electoral votes that these democratic blue states have. So it's like all part of this greater agenda of them taking over complete control. And it's really scary to think about. Yeah, it, it is. But I want to bring up something else on a, a separate but related note. And that's what's going on in Europe. And we talked about the farmer protests in Germany, France, and Belgium a couple weeks ago. And just as a quick update on that, like Spain is in the mix now too. And they just have hundreds of Spanish farmers taking to the highways with their tractors and they're protesting the, you know, the failing bureaucracy and economy and all those stupid rules and demands being imposed on farmers in Europe as part of this global climate change agenda, which by the way, will be coming to the United States and Spain's agricultural ministry on Tuesday announced that they're going to distribute like $289 million in aid to somewhere of like 140,000 farmers as a way to try to appease them. But basically the, the EU is a fucking mess. And like as much as inflation sucks in the US, I can tell you firsthand that we're experiencing massive inflation here where I'm at in Eastern Europe as well. But the reason I bring this up is because I want to take a look at some other protests that are happening in Germany that are not related to trucking, but they're related to immigration. And I have not seen hardly any media coverage of this on American MSM, but there have been ongoing protests in Germany for almost a month now. And these protests are all against a far-right nationalist political party called the AFD, which is the Alternative for Deutschland or Alternative for Germany. And part of their platform is anti-immigration. And they want to deport millions of immigrants out of the country. And I think it's important to be paying attention to this because it's mirroring what's happening in the United States. They're 
party is rising in popularity in the poll ratings, signifying the German people are sick of the current government structure. They're tired of being overrun with migrants. They're tired of the global ESG agenda, and they want their nationality back. So these protests and rallies against the AFD have been taking place all over Germany. And some of these have upwards of like 300,000 protesters at a time. And according to preliminary data from the Interior Ministry of Germany, just this past weekend, over 480,000 people participated in 120 different protests. And this is, again, going on all over the country. Many of the protests are turning violent. And not coincidentally, they are taking place just ahead of Germany's state and European parliament elections, which are set to take place in June. And the AFD is being called a, quote, extremist movement um, because they oppose immigration. They want Germany to leave NATO and the European Union. So opposing parties are saying that the AFD is like the new neo-Nazi National Democratic Party of Germany. It needs to be banned. And like, Stephanie, I bring this up because does this not sound an awful lot like the way Trump and the MAGA movement and patriotic Americans are being portrayed in the U.S.? Those of us who want to close border, like I guarantee we are going to start seeing massive protests like this in America, especially as summer approaches and we get closer to our own elections. Yeah, it sounds like every country is on the verge of a civil war. But, you know, just like think about it. It's like not only do you have you know, places like the Clinton Foundation that are funding these Antifa people rioting. But here, like now you have 10, possibly 22 million illegals that can join the fight. And like, look at how many people have been protesting in the U.S. for Palestine. And that's exactly what I think is happening in Germany. Like, I think that the majority of actual tax paying citizens are Probably just like here, they're probably sick of the illegal immigration and woke policies. But the far left, I guarantee they're funding these groups to go out and protest and make it look like everyone is against the right wing political party, just like they do here with the mainstream media making it seem like everyone hates Trump when clearly like the data and the numbers show that that's not true. So I'm sure that they're like paying a lot of these young people to protest and riot and and stir, uh, you know, a whole scene to flip the script and make it look like everyone is against the right wing party. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just my conspiracy. Like, I think it's probably one big psyop again, like one big theatrical performance. And I'm calling it right now closer to the election. The left will start threatening riots and chaos again, just like they did in 2020. They're going to, you know. Um, threatened to like completely upend our whole society. And think about like how many people you heard say that they would vote for Biden simply because they knew if Trump won, the the riots would keep breaking out. Yep. It's like, why would we not think like they're going to pull the same crap again as usual, you know, like, and that's the thing. They won't, the Republicans and the Democrats, they don't play by the same rules. They're playing two completely different ball games. You have the left that will play dirty and use all these crazy tactics. And then the right that just cowers down. And I'm just, I'm so over it. Um, but there is another country that's in the mix and that's Ireland. And they're going strong and standing up to illegal immigration. And it's all over TikTok. Like last night, oh my gosh, I saw post after post of these massive protests in the street and they're all chanting get them out and holding signs that say Irish lives matter and I guess they're just done with what's happening in Ireland with same thing all of these migrants coming in and wreaking havoc um they said that illegal immigration is up 200 percent from 2019 to 2022 and so At one of these protests, you had the Irish Freedom Party president, Herman Kelly, that gave a speech to like 10,000 of these Irish protesters saying, quote, we need to take back political power from the anti-Irish globalist establishment. And he went on to say that the number of Muslims across Europe has increased dramatically and it's very grave, dangerous for European civilization. And he said he's claiming he knows people who were victimized in random Islamic attacks. The increase in crime is coming very, very quickly, and it's going to be personal, he said. 
So he said, quote, what we want to be is to be a free people in a free country. What we want is personal freedom and national sovereignty, end quote. So again, like sounds awfully similar to what we're experiencing here. And I don't know how much more proof we need at this point that there is a globalist elite establishment that holds the true power over the world. And we're seeing this same scenario play out in all these countries. But it's great to see that at least the Irish are standing up for their country. And I wish we would see more of that here. Yeah, me too. And like, I guess that trucker convoy we talked about a couple of weeks ago that was going to the border, I guess it was like fairly uneventful and no drama, which was good. But it was also a relatively small contingency of people. And it's like, we need what's happening in Ireland. We need a mass unification of the people who want to stand up for our freedom and national sovereignty against our government who clearly wants to fucking get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know that that'll ever happen because yeah. most taxpayers, we have too much to lose. You know, we've got families, we have jobs, we... There's just too much to lose. And so it's I don't know that anything will come of it. Just more. It theatrics. will when it will when it gets as bad as it has been in Europe. And that's what yeah. I keep saying is like we're not in America at that point where Americans are experiencing the level of economic hardship that other countries are. And when that happens, which it will. That's when the script is going to flip, but it's going to be too late if we still have fucking Biden or another cabal yeah. member in office. Yeah, it's probably too late already. I mean, if there's 22 million people, that's they can take our military. I mean, it's like it's probably to that point, unfortunately. So by the time everyone gets on board, it's like it's going to be so far gone. So at least the border bill did not pass. We'll see yeah. what, you know, comes of that. Because like I said, I don't think that's the end of it. I think we're going to hear a lot more. And I think things are going to really heat up the closer and closer we get to the election. So we'll keep everyone posted on that. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you back here on Monday. If you're sick of all the crazy shit going on in our country and you want to express your support and patriotism for the show, head on over to our Etsy store at UO Patriot Chicks and check out our new stickers. The link can also be found on our website. If you love the show and you want exclusive episodes, support the podcast and join the conversation by becoming a member of our Patreon community. We'll be posting weekly member-only podcast episodes and content that isn't available on the weekly podcast. Every Patreon member will also get a free unapologetically outspoken sticker and updates about our new sticker release before they're made public. And be sure to follow us on TikTok at unapologetically outspoken. And if you haven't done so already, please rate and review the podcast. The more you support us, the more people we can reach. So help us spread the word.